Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Ma'am, shall we start? A 61 year old male presented to the ER with complaints of on and off fever since three days, associated with numbness and tingling sensations over the face since one day duration. On our initial 10 second assessment, patient was conscious, oriented, and obeying commands. Coming to airway, airway was patent, no hoarseness, no strider. Coming to breathing, air entry bilaterally equal, respiratory rate of 18 per minute. Saturation of 98% on room air. Coming to circulation, BP of 120 bar 70 millimeters of mercury. On applying the BP cuff, we were able to notice the carpopedal spasm. Pulse rate of 90 beats per minute. Coming to disability, so Jesus. How will you see carpopedal spasm? How will that look like? Uh, Ma'am, if we uh, inflate the spigma manometer 10 to 15 millimeters of mercury above the normal systolic BP for at least 3 minutes. Mm then we can see the deformities of the hand where there is extension of the mm. elbow, flexion of the wrist, flexion of the metacarpophalangeal joint, adduction of the fingers and mm. extension of interphalangeal joint. Okay. Mm. So, <coughs> coming to disability, GCS of E4, V5, M6, pupil bilaterally equally reacting to light. <coughs> Exposure, temperature 98.2 degree Fahrenheit, GRBS of 130 milligram per deciliter. Coming to adjuncts of primary survey, we taken a CBC CRP point of care showing a total count of 5000, platelet of 2 lakh, CRP of 20. We have taken an ECG which showed heart rate of uh, 60 <coughs> per minute with a QTC of 520. At this point of time, we have given injection calcium gluconate 10% 10 ml over 10 minutes. Then we come to sample history. So was the calcium value available that time? Uh, no ma'am, VVG was not available at that time. We sent the samples of things. Okay, okay. So, suspecting that, so what did you suspect at that point of time? Uh, hypocalcemic tetany. Okay. Mm. Okay. So, uh, this, what was the patient's presenting symptom? Patient has a history of fever with chills mm. for three days duration associated with uh, numbness and tingling sensations over the face mm. of one day duration. Okay, so how can a hypocalcemia present to the ER? What are the different manifestations? Uh, coming to systemic manifestations, CVS, patient can present with any arrhythmias, mm. hypertension, cardiac failure. Coming to CVS, man uh, CNS manifestations, altered behavior, uh, generalized mm. tonic clonic seizures, mm. uh, then mm, papilledema, pseudotumor, cerebri, mm. uh, uh, perioral numbness. So, we can differentiate it uh, based on muscular. Muscular, may, mainly patients can complain of generalized weakness. Some Many patients come to the ER with generalized weakness. So, sometimes it can be generalized weakness, fatigue or any muscle pain, spasms or pain or cramps in the body. That can be one manifestation. Then there can be some neurological manifestations. As you told, a tingling, numbness, uh, perioral numbness, these things can also be there. Then this signs, this hands and all numbness, these can be there. Sometimes irritability or uh, tetany and seizure can also be there. These are the neurological manifestations. Then cardiovascular. Cardiovascular, uh, there can be QT prolongation and all we will be only seeing in the ECGs. Uh, there can be arrhythmias or bradycardia causing syncope and all. Then in the skin. Uh, brittle nails cause uh, dry skin. Uh, brittle dry skin mm -hmm. and coarse hairs That's can right. also be there. Then other. Uh, ocular cataract can be seen mm. and also in case of chronic uh, vitamin D deficiency and all in the uh, bones and all we can see um, rickets like changes and all can be seen okay coming to sample history a 61 year old male no previous comorbidities present to the ER with complaints of one and of fever since three days duration it was low grade fever intermittent and decreased on medication the patient also gives history of generalized tiredness myalgia uh, ocular um, occasional numbness and tingling sensations over the face. Uh, no history of any palpitation, strider, altered behavior, breathlessness or giddiness. Uh, no history of any uh, previous episodes in the past. Uh, no history of any comorbidities, no history of any medical history. Uh, the last meal was taken at uh, 6.30 am. Coming to general examination, no paralytic sinusis, clubbing, generalized lymphadenopathy or pedal edema. Uh, systemic examination, GCS 15 by 15, 
bilateral pupil equally reacting to light moving all four limbs uh, cvs s1 s2 present uh, no murmurs respiratory system air and bilateral equal gat soft non tender bowel sounds were present at this point of time we have sent the routine blood investigations uh, what that, all will you send uh, we have sent a uh, patient has history of fever so cbc crp we have sent mm -hmm. and we already got the value <coughs> okay got the value uh, then we have sent uh, electrolytes uh, mm -hmm. including uh, magnesium phosphorus uh, mm -hmm. potassium uh, mm -hmm. what is the significance of sending electrolytes uh, each electrolyte uh, magnesium uh, if there is a hypomagnesemia there mm -hmm. can be parathyroid hormone resistance mm -hmm. so we need to correct magnesium uh, before mm -hmm. correcting calcium okay uh, same with phosphorus Phos uh, based on phosphorus levels also we can classify the causes of mm -hmm. uh, hypocalcemia mm -hmm. uh, potassium uh, so what what is the relation between phosphorus and calcium uh, increases uh, in hypocalcium Oh, so the chance of hypocalcemia will increase if the phosphorus is high. Right. Then, then uh, LFTs we have sent, especially mm. for serum albumin, mm. uh, because uh, we need to look at the correct calcium level. Mm. Mm, then, uh, what will happen if albumin is low? Uh, albumin is low, correct calcium will increase. Mm. Uh, so correct calcium is uh, <coughs> serum calcium plus 0 0.8 into 4 minus serum albumin. Mm. Okay, so. Uh, so, uh, how is calcium seen in the body? Uh, calcium is seen as 99% uh, in bones and 1% mm. in blood. And in 1%, 50% are free ionized calcium. 40% uh, bind to albumin and 10% to proteins. Mm. So, uh, if, um, so, that is a relation. So, uh, there is a chance that calcium will bind to albumin. Then, when all, uh, what all other blood parameters will vary the calcium? If there is alkalosis, what will happen? Uh, alkalosis, uh, the serum ca ionized calcium will be low. Ionized calcium will mm -hmm. be low. Okay, then? Uh, uh, pH, uh, uh, same mm. alkalosis. Mm. Mm. And hyperventilation okay. cases. Okay. Be. So, um, calcium will bind to albumin, mm. then it will bind to other proteins, okay. which you have told. Then, uh, then to what all calcium can bind? So, negatively charged anions also calcium will bind. Okay. So, um, this much uh, what are, <coughs> this much investigations will you uh, will you you will be sending? Then what else? Other investigation? Uh, RFTs for looking at the creatinine levels. Looking for renal failure renal induced failure. hypocalcemia. Yes, okay. Okay. So, what was seen in this patient? <coughs> the patients have had a serum calcium of six. Mm -hmm. uh, albumin was uh, three point nine. Uh, so the character calcium came around 6.8 magnesium was 1.5 uh, creatinine was 1.2 phosphorus was 3.4 uh, we have also sent the parathyroid hormone uh, which was 80. so all the electrolytes rfts lfts were normal okay, okay. then you have sent for the parathyroid, parathyroid hormone okay. and vitamin d also we have sent mm. parathyroid hormone was uh, 18 within mm. the normal range mm. vitamin d was uh, 12 which was on the lower side Okay, so what will so if if you are getting a parathyroid level as low or normal, uh, so initially itself you are getting the parathyroid value. Then what will you send? Low or normal parathyroid? Mm, mm. If it is low, what will you do? True hypoparathyroidism. It can be uh, because of hypoparathyroidism. Also, as you told for magnesium, mm. mag also send the magnesium mm. value also. So, if parathyroid is low, send the magnesium, find for any uh, yes, no. low magnesium no. which is contributing to the low parathyroid level. Okay. If the parathyroid is high? It's a pseudo hypoparathyroidism. Yeah. Um, pseudo parathyroidism or parathyroid will be high in case of? Uh, if it is high, you are getting, check for pseudo hypoparathyroidism, then also check for the renal failure, okay. RFTs. So check for the RFTs. If RFT is normal. <laughs> Abnormal, we can tell that if it, uh, hypocalcemia Smart. is because of renal failure. If RT is normal, then mm -hmm. send for vitamin, vitamin D. D. Okay. In this patient, vitamin D was on the lower side, less than mm -hmm. 20, that is 12. Mm -hmm. uh, and with ECG changes and symptoms were present, mm -hmm. uh, we started the patient on uh, calcium gluconate uh, 5 ampules in uh, 500 ml 5% dextrose mm -hmm. over 6 to 8 hours. And mm -hmm. we repeated the 
calcium level every uh, four hours. Mm. Meanwhile, we have also corrected the magnesium level also mm. in this patient. Okay. And uh, every twelve hours, uh, we have rechecked mm. again. The calcium level came down to increased to seven point six mm. and eight point five. Mm. Finally, after two days. Okay. So, what is the normal calcium level in the blood? Uh, eight point corrected calcium around eight point eight to ten point three. Mm. Normal. So, Ionized calcium. Uh, in, in, in our lab, we will get the uh, calcium like that. Sometimes we will be getting only the ionized calcium. So, what is the level of ionized calcium uh, normal? In millimoles, we are getting in our VBG. It oh. is 1.2 uh, to 1.5. Uh, 1.12 to 1.29. Okay. Uh, whereas in um, labs, if we are getting in a milligram per deciliter, it will come between 4.5 to 5.6. That is the uh, ionized calcium level. Okay. Uh, this patient had ECG abnormalities. What was their QT prolongation? QT prolongation. prolongation was it? Okay. Uh, what ABG abnormality? If you told this patient ABG was not available. What ABG abnormality will you expect? Alkalosis in hypertension. Alkalosis. So, what is it? Uh, what difference can alkalosis produce in the patient's calcium? Uh, for every uh, change in pH, uh, zero point one increase. Uh, mm. The serum calcium level. Decreased by 0 0.16. Okay, okay. And what change will albumin uh, cause in calcium? Uh, 0 0.8. Uh, mm. Each 1 gram of reduction mm. in um, calcium albumin can cause 0 0.8 Eight. reduction in the Eight. calcium. Yes. Uh, increase in the calcium. Okay. Then, uh, so uh, this patient you have got the reason as vitamin D deficiency. deficiency. Okay. Uh, when all vitamin D can be deficient in the body? Uh, one is dietary mm. deficiency. Mm. Renal, ah, renal failure. So, there will be um, difficulty in metabolizing the vitamin D and uh, producing 1,2-hydroxy. Uh, Dihydroxy, this thing. Then <coughs> absorption from the mm, absorption. Well, mm. when all will be absorption affected? Mm. Either malnutrition, mm. patient is not taking adequately. Then Malignous. malabsorption. Mm. Malabsorption will happen in, uh, in diseases like uh, irritable bowel mm. diseases, celiac disease, and all. Patient will be having impaired absorption. Okay, then renal failure, renal failure, okay. Which all are these? So, suppose this patient's vitamin D also was normal. What what else can be the cause? Uh, hypomagnesemia can be. Mm. Then? In this case. Mm. Parathyroid hormone was normal in this case. Mm. Uh, renal was also normal. When will parathyroid hormone, hormone will be low? Uh, in true hypoparathyroidism, mm. parathyroid hormone will be on the lower side. Mm. Which all patients parathyroid hormones will be low? Post-thyroidectomy Post patient and patient with low magnesium. Then some congenital syndromes like digestive syndrome and uh, congenital syndromes it can be low. And idiopathic also, it can be low. Then, then other causes like hypocalcemia can be seen in pancreatitis because of saponification. Pancreatitis we can see. Then uh, we have already mentioned about the CLD patients and in that albumin CLD chronic liver disease, chronic kidney disease. These conditions it can affect. Okay. Then, uh, then regarding the management in the niche, uh, what is the initial management as you told? Initial, we have given injection calcium gluconate, 10% mm. is 10 ml over 10 minutes we have given. Mm. How many times did you give that? Uh, actually, we can give up to three times. Mm. We have given only one time, then we started the patient on. Did the patient improve with that? Uh, no, the patient didn't improve with injection calcium gluconate. Mm. Okay. So, we have started the patient on infusion actually. Okay, okay. Then what happened to this patient? Uh, we have serially monitored the serum calcium level, we have corrected the magnesium level mm. and the calcium gradually came down to 8.8 uh, 8 character mm. calcium level in two days. Okay. And we have also started the patient on vitamin D supplementation also. Okay, okay. What was started? 
shelcaldi and vitamin D sachet was also started. Okay. So um, when we are discharging this patient, how much calcium will you advise per day? Uh, one gram per day. Uh, one gram calcium per day should be advised for. Uh, one month, one to two months. Okay, one to two months. Then uh, make sure that we are not giving more than that because sometimes patients um, later on can come with hypercalcemia. More than hypercalcemia, they can present with renal stones. So uh, give maximum for one month. Then after that, uh, monitor the calcium level and um, reduce the um, calcium dose accordingly. Okay. Anything else? Mm. Thank you.